Abraham Pig here with another Lotto Lock. This one is from Mason. It has a ball bearing locking mechanism. It is key retaining. And the reason I found this one interesting is that it is a slider lock, unlike many other Lottos. Um, I've seen a couple of videos where people have picked these before, uh, including Black Dolphin 90 and Paul Springett, uh, who picked a lock loaned by Murloc 68. Um, that I'll link to below. And um, when I was actually learning to pick this lock, I found a video where Starry Lock tried to pick it and didn't succeed, but mentioned that Bosnian Bill had talked about uh, slider locks and the ability to bully them, which turned out to be super helpful. I was trying to single pin pick this lock uh, and not getting very far, and it turns out bullying works great. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, here's the key. You can see that the bidding is uh, uh, not terrible. The other one that I have, the bidding gets uh, just progressively deeper towards the tip of the key. Uh, and that one I can bully all the way open. This one I actually have to pick some of the pins one at a time. Um, and I'm going to be using two tensioners, uh, one to actually tension the lock, and the other one to hold the bottom of the wafers down. I don't know if you can see, but the wafers, uh, the slider wafers, stick part of the way if up from the bottom of the lock, and the actual uh, slider parts are jammed all the way against the top of the keyway, so they're hard to get at. Uh, and the key has a little ramp on the front that pushes it down as it goes in, and if you simulate that by putting a flat piece of metal on that side and holding it in place with your tensioning tool, then you can lift the little nubs off of the bottom of the keyway and get them to cooperate a little better. So bullying, I'm just going to insert a standard hook and use the back of it to kind of pry at the sliders. Um, kind of willy-nilly, and I'm getting a couple of clicks, and the core is moving slightly. So this will get us part of the way, and eventually... Oh, oh on this try, it got us all the way unlocked. Uh, usually I have to use the, uh, the actual tip of the hook to get on some specific sliders on the back and uh, pull them up one at a time. All right, let's gut this lock. I've only seen these gutted partially on video before. So there is an Allen screw down the shackle hole. And when you get that out, the bottom doesn't want to come out. It's quite tightly fitted in there. So what I found is that if I take an Allen key and just use it to shove in the hole, I can get the bottom to pop out like that. And now this part comes out. This is just a plastic holder with a nut and the core. And in here we have an actuator, two ball bearings, and the shackle itself. So, if we lock this back up and oops, and push it out with the key, uh, the core is uh, just a cast sleeve with two uh, grooves for the discs to fit in. And the way you get it apart further is actually kind of interesting. There is a little uh, 11th wafer in the back here that just sticks up and prevents the plug from falling out. So you take a thin piece of metal, like a thin pick, and you shove it in there, and the whole thing slides out the front. Uh, all that's in the sleeve, besides the, the grooves that the sliders fit in before you've set them, or if you've overset them, is uh, there's a little track here for the rotation limiter, which is on right there on the front of the plug. And we have uh, 10 kind of wafer sliders, each with its own spring, and the 11th one that holds the core closed when the lock is assembled. I'm going to show you something right now. Uh, 
related to the bidding that I'm going to talk about more later, but if you uh, take a flat piece of metal and just push all these down, you can sort of see that some of them go all the way down and are flush, some of them stick out a little bit, and some of them stick out all the way. That's because there's three different uh, depths of cut on this, and I'll show you that on the wafers uh, later on. Those three different heights that they stick out correspond to those three depths of cut. All right, let's get some tweezers and pull these out one at a time. I'm going to stack them uh, one above the other in pairs corresponding to the slots they come out of. And the eleventh one is different from all the others. It just has these two prongs, and all it does is hold the core uh, closed. So these, uh, there's eleven springs in here. They're all the same. I'm not going to bother pulling them out. And if you look closely, let me try to zoom in on the sliders a little bit. Which direction? Come on, no, it doesn't want to. All right. Let me lift this up then. There are only three different uh, slices of slider, and there's only three different depths of cut on the key. Um, the ones, you can tell them easily apart visually by looking at uh, whether the top and bottom here and here are the same size. So if they're the same size, they're the middle cut. On some of them, the top is thinner and the bottom is thicker, and that is the... Uh, the shallowest cut, and then there's ones where the top is thicker and the bottom is thinner, and those are the deepest cut, and they're thirty thousandths different. So there is a um, the the middle one has sixty thousandths thickness on both sides, and the other two have thirty and ninety and ninety and thirty, and then on the key, the depths are like ninety thousandths right there. This is a sixty thousandths, and this is a thirty thousandths depth uh, from the edge of the cut to the edge of the key. Um, that's all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching.